Oh, no. Oh. Hello. I've lost the Queen's Stephanie. I had her a second ago. How can I lose the biggest ship in the big harbor? Oh, no, I don't mean that I, I lost a cruise ship. No, well, the real one's right there in the water. No, I mean a little marker that I use for the big board. I, I mean, there's the Nautilus, the Navy ship, and, and there's Rebecca. But I can't find the one for the Queen Stephanie. <sighs> the only thing I can do is, well, I can try what Theodore did when he lost something. Let me tell you that story. One morning, Theodore went exploring on the rocky shore. Maybe I'll find some pirate ship's treasure today, he thought hopefully. But he looked and he looked. And all he found was an old bumper, some driftwood, and a broken lobster trap. Theodore was just about to leave when something caught his eye. Oh, it's probably just an old cable holder, he told himself. But his engine raced with excitement anyway. As Theodore came closer, he suddenly realized what he'd found. It was a little bit rusty and a little bit dirty, but it was better than any pirate ship's treasure. It's a siren, Theodore gasped. Just like Fodox. to show his friends his wonderful discovery right away. It probably needs to be cleaned up first, he realized. But wouldn't it be great if my siren really worked? Just then, Theodore spotted a familiar red hat by the oil refinery. I can show it to Foda, he thought eagerly. But then, Theodore changed his mind. Or maybe I can let him hear it instead, he smiled. Theodore didn't really think the rusty old siren would make any noise. But when he turned it on, out came a loud whoop, whoop, whoop that filled the whole harbor with sound. Theodore was surprised, and Fodok was even more surprised. He looked around in alarm and then hurried towards Theodore. Is everything all right? He asked out of breath. Everything's better than all right, Theodore smiled. I just got my very own siren. Fodok didn't smile back. Theodore, he said in a stern voice, sirens should only be used in emergency situations. Please do not turn your siren on again in the big harbor. Theodore was disappointed, but not for long. He had to head to the end of the harbor now anyway to help Emily tow Emma Sophia into her dock. I can turn my siren on then, he said to himself. That won't bother anyone. As soon as he got out near the end of the harbor, Theodore tried his new siren again. Theodore loved the big, important sound. Just then, Emily came sailing up. Do you want to hear my new siren again? Theodore called to his friend. Sure, said Emily, but not now. It's time to tow Emma Sophia. She's coming into the harbor now. Without another thought about his siren, Theodore headed off to help his friend. Sophia into the harbor was easy, really hard. The air was bumped and jostled as the tug struggled to get the cargo ship into place. Oops, sorry, Emily apologized after accidentally bumping Theodore. Oh, that's okay, Emily, Theodore said, regaining his balance. He knew she didn't mean it. Just a little further, Emma Sophia guided them. Come in. Good work, you two. With Emma Sophia safely docked, Theodore was all ready to try his new siren again. Let's go, Emily, he urged. Not yet, Emily laughed. We've got to fill our tanks at the fuel dock first.
Theodore could hardly wait to hear the wonderful sound of his siren again. He quickly filled his tank and tried to make Emily hurry too. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? He kept asking her. Almost finished, Theodore, laughed Emily. Emily didn't want to hold Theodore up. You go ahead, she said. I've still got a few jobs to do. I'll catch up with you later. Theodore tooted goodbye. Then hurried back to the tiny cove where he'd used his siren before. This time, Theodore wanted to make the loudest sound he could. Okay, he said to himself. On your mark, get set, here goes. Theodore turned to his siren and it wasn't there. Oh no, Theodore suddenly realized. I've lost my siren. Theodore didn't know where to look. He got halfway to the ferry dock, but then he turned and headed back the other way. It couldn't be at the ferry dock. I wasn't even there. Maybe it's over here. No, maybe it's over there. Bedford Bowie watched Theodore go back and forth in this strange way for, for some time. Finally, he had to find out why. Theodore, Bedford called. What are you doing? I'm looking for my siren, Theodore answered. Or at least I would be if I knew where to look. Did you see it, Bedford? Bedford thought for a moment. No, he said, but I did hear it. Theodore was disappointed. Thanks, Bedford, he said, but that's really not going to help me. You're right, Bedford laughed at himself. I just thought, since ships use my bell to find their way in the fog, that you could use the sound of the siren. Bedford, that's a great idea, Theodore said to his surprised friend. Where did you hear my siren coming from? Well, Bedford thought, the first time it was coming from near the oil refinery, and then the next time it was close to the mouth of the harbor. Good thing you were using your ears, Bedford, Theodore said, because now I know where to look. The last place Bedford had heard his siren was near the mouth of the harbor, so that's where Theodore looked first. He looked all over the tiny cove. But no luck. His siren wasn't there. I guess my siren's gone for good, he said sadly. Now, why'd you be saying that? A familiar voice asked. Theodore turned and saw his friend Digby, the cable ship. And where'd this here siren eaten by sharks? Digby asked. No, Theodore answered. Or she kidnapped and smuggled off to Lower Burrito, perhaps? Digby wondered. No, Theodore said again. Well then, unless she sprouted legs and swam for shore, she has to be somewhere in the harbor, Digby assured him. Theodore wasn't so sure. Where? He asked. Now that, I wouldn't know, Digby said. I don't have much of a memory for things I never did. Theodore was just about to ask what memory had to do with finding his siren when he understood. I just have to remember where else I went with my siren. Then I'll know where to look. Let me see, he said slowly. I know, I helped Emily with Emma Sophia. And then we went to the fuel dock. Oh, thanks, Digby. Then that's where you'll find it, Digby claimed. Now be off with us. I want this siren to be more than just a beautiful memory. In no time, Theodore was at Emma Sophia's dock. He had a quick look around, but couldn't see any sign of the siren. Oh well. Maybe it's at the fuel dock, he thought cheerfully. But when Theodore looked all over, under and around the dock, it wasn't there either. Now, Theodore was really beginning to lose hope of ever finding his siren. He sailed sadly back out into the big harbor.
What's the matter, Theodore? It was Rebecca, the research vessel. I lost my siren, Theodore said sadly. Then slowly, he moved towards Rebecca. I know how hard looking for things can be, she said. Sometimes, I go days and days without finding a single whale. What do you do then? Theodore asked. I use my stack, Rebecca replied. I asked myself, did anything different happen today that would make the whales go away? Was there a big storm, or, or did a boat scare them off? Theodore's eyes lit up. Maybe something different happened that made my siren disappear. He thought about everything he did since he found it. Only one thing was unusual. Emily bumped me when we were docking Emma Sophia. Maybe it fell off then. I'd better take a second look at the cargo shed. Theodore floated back to Emma Sophia's dock and began to hunt for a siren. The cargo ship watched Theodore search. He didn't look very happy. Did you lose something? She asked. Yes, said Theodore sadly. My siren. I looked for it, and I listened for it. I used my stack. There must be something I didn't do. Yes, Emma Sophia said. There is. Theodore looked puzzled. You didn't ask me, she said with a big smile in her voice. I wondered who this belonged to. Theodore turned, and there on his friend's deck was his siren, all beautifully shiny. My siren, said Theodore. I found it on the dock and decided to clean it, Emma Sophia said. I guess that's why you didn't see it the last time. Well, Theodore smiled his happiest smile. I'm glad I lost my siren, he said. You are? Why? Emma Sophia asked in surprise. Because now I found something even better, Theodore laughed. I found out how to find things. I still can't find the Queen Stephanie. I've looked for her. I've listened too. The only thing I can remember hearing is the phone ring. And I picked up the phone, and I still had the Queen Stephanie in my hand. And I wrote down the message, and then I put the pencil in my pocket. <laughs> if I put the pencil in my pocket, why do I still have a pencil in my hand? Uh-oh. It's time for you to go back to the harbor, Your Majesty. <laughs> and it's time for me to go, too. Thanks for visiting us here in the big harbor. And we'll see you all again next time. Here. That's where you belong. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore. George and the harbor master too.